I'm going to show you guys today is how to make your very own gas tank for demolition derby. Now if you take a look at this one, it actually has two sending units in it. We have a no return system here and we have a return system here and we have all the wires coming off. So when I throw this inside my vehicles, this will work for cars that have a return line from the motor to the pump and a no return line system. Um, I find a lot of the basically I'm going to say 99, 2000 and newers are all switching to a no return system. Um, both of these are high pressure pumps so these will not work on a carbureted vehicle. These are like uh, for your TBI vehicles, your fuel injected. Um, the only things that I'm finding here is a lot of the GM LS series they run at a little bit higher PSI so these pumps will not run a truck. It will run but probably not the best. I've ran these in everywhere from minivans to V8 front wheel drives to V8 rear wheel drives to Toyota Camrys to Honda Civics to Honda Accords, HHRs, you name it, I've had these tanks work. A lot of people ask me, what kind of pumps do I use? And realistically, I use every pump I can. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that, like, for example, the newer Cavaliers and GM products all have plastic gas tanks. I can't really do too much with a plastic gas tank. What I like is a steel unit on the top. GMs have these twisty things. A lot of newer Fords have a big uh, twisty lid that goes down onto it. I don't use any of those. What I use is a lid that's being able to be tech screwed down. Now, what we have here is a newer style Toyota Camry pump. We have all the wires. What we have here is a Honda Civic pump. Actually, I believe this is a cord. I can't say for sure, but I actually really like these Honda Accord pumps. They go right down to the bottom of the tank, no problem. They have a, a pretty high PSI system to run basically any front wheel drive fuel injected car. And for you rear wheel drives, this right here is actually out of a Crown Vic. Now this right here is an older style Crown Vic. This is uh, basically 97 and older. And as you see, it has a return line. And I've actually had to change the pump on this once because the factory pump did die. But what I really like about these is you're able to basically just cut a hole, sink it in, put a whole bunch of um, seal all, which is a chemical that seals these in and is very fuel resistant. And then I put holes in all the factory bolts and then I add a lot of extra holes just to make sure that this is bolted down. Now, what we're going to do, I was debating on two things. This tank right here, these pumps do not work. Um, they've been through the ringer for the past, I'm going to say, six years. And they've had a bad go. I was going to cut these out and install some of these, but... I think I'll just do that later. I don't really feel like get the getting that in depth in this video because of how this tank is set up. I'd pretty much have to take a zip cut and cut the whole top of the tank off and then weld in a new piece of fresh steel to get rid of all these holes and then add my pumps where desired. But I think that's a little bit out of the range today. So what we have here is a derby gas tank. It is just a steel bolt tank. We've emptied out all the fuel. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start taking this apart. Now, I know these p tanks are getting harder and harder to come by because boats these days actually come with plastic ones. But there's still thousands upon thousands of these items out there. I'm paying about 10 to 25 bucks for each one of these, depending on condition, depending on size. Uh, some of them I buy are bigger than others. Some of them I buy are smaller, but... Realistically, if I'm paying uh, 20 bucks or less, I'm usually pretty happy buying these. I buy them by bulk. Sometimes you find people just throwing them out. You find them at garage sales for five bucks. But this one right here has had a life before me because it is covered in silicone, so it's probably had a couple leaks. With the tank sending unit removed, we still got a little bit of residue of basically gasoline in there and as you guys may know gasoline is highly flammable and we do have to cut this and make this larger we do have to get rid of the handle so what we're going to do now is we're going to go fill this tank with water and the reason that we fill it with water is that water is not flammable and being not 
flammable is pretty damn nice. Now we're just putting a little bit of water in there right now, but we'll actually have this filled up to the top later on when I go to cut into it. Uh, most of the time I like to use uh, drills and sawzalls to do this, but sometimes you got to get out the mini grinder. And if you're going to use a mini grinder on a gas tank, please, please, please make sure that you've got all the gas out. And even if you fill it up to the top with water while you're grinding, because even if you take the gas out, you slosh water around, there's still going to be gas fumes in there. So please be very cautious while you're doing this. I'm going to be using a sawzall today. I might use a grinder for a bit to help remove this handle, but that is it. I have made a rough drawing of where I think the hole for the gas tank is going to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make a sawzall mark across here. And as you notice, I've kind of gone off this way because I want that pump to sit as level as possible. And underneath here, there's actually a thicker piece of steel that is designed to basically make that sending unit for the factory tank very rigid so you can kind of, people pick them up by it even though they do have handles. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sawzall now and we're going to cut around it so that this pump will actually fit in there. Now the tolerances are quite tight. Uh, I made it for four and a quarter so we might have to kind of trim it back once we get it open. So let's go get the sawzall and we'll kind of cut the cut for a fuel pump what we can do is we can kind of go around and we can rough up these edges okay even though I've already cut the hole and used the sawzall and ground it I'm still very nervous of these things blowing up what we're gonna do now is just make a flat surface all the way around so that the pump can have nice steel surface contact all the way around. Because that sawzall really does warp the metal. fits very nicely it's got very little play so now with the surface grinded what we're going to do is we're going to kind of buff up this surface here with the grinder because the more rougher of the surface the better the compound will stick with the whole bent straight so now the pump will get a good seal we got the, the paint all removed and the steel stuff scuffed up what I've done is I've gone out and I've bought this product. Now I buy this at Napa or Canadian Tire. You guys can pretty much get it anywhere. I know Princess Auto sells it. It's called Seal All. And uh, it's an amazing product. It says automotive contact adhesive, adhesive and cement, quick setting, uh, gas and oil resistance. Honestly guys, this is the one, one of the only products I've found that actually holds up to gas. I found a couple other products, but the problem is, is they're quite quite very expensive actually and uh, this stuff right here is super cheap uh, I've used this from anywhere to sealing holes on the vehicles I drive in their gas tanks to the actual transmission pans on vehicles to fixing my shoes I really actually like this product and no I'm not sponsored by them so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this very generously on the bottom side of this pump oh Gotta break the seal because this is a brand new tube. Now we will apply more afterwards, but what I do is I just put it on all the way around. Now I do find this product runs out of the container as soon as you stop squeezing and it still keeps coming. So we're going to place the pump in here, but if you guys take a look, I'm going to place it in so that the 
feed line will actually face the motor when it's inside there. So we're just going to set this down just like that. Now it's as simple as just adding your tech screws. So what I do is I put a tech screw through every hole that was designed in the factory mount. I find this to be one of the most cost effective and best ways to do it. Uh, just for an example on how much this actually cost, uh, the fuel tank I believe cost me five to ten dollars. The tech screws I'm pretty sure were five ninety nine for twenty four. Uh, the sealant was seven dollars for that, and then my time. Pump was free. And the reason why the pump was free is because it actually came in the derby car that we're going to be smashing this tank in. So now I just add more tech screws in between all of the original screws I put in. So basically we're doubling the amount of screws to hold this thing in. Now these screws have hundreds of names, tech screws, Kelly screws, self-tappers, I just call them tech screws. Now, now that that's done, what we're going to do is we're basically just going to clean up all the metal shavings from around the edges. And now we're going to put another thick layer of seal all all the way around the tank. And what that's going to do is just basically help it seal out any dirt, keep the fuel in, and give it a basically a second layer of security to keep that fuel in there. And I really don't like taking these gas tanks apart, so if it takes one tube to fully put one together, then that's fine. And I cover up all the Kelly screw heads, basically just make sure that it's all right in there good, nowhere's left unsealed. Now the great stuff about this is you can actually add more sealant. If you find it's got a small leak somewhere, you can add sealant. Now if it's a big leak, you're going to have to take it back apart. But if you do everything nicely and correctly in the first couple steps, cut the hole the right size, that kind of thing, there will be no big leaks. Now this will not look like a professional tank, but it will act like a professional tank because Sometimes I find the best fuel pumps you can buy are the actual pumps that come in the factory car. They're designed to last for 100,000, 200,000 miles or kilometers. These aftermarket derby pumps or aftermarket fuel pumps, the Holly ones, the professional ones, I've had them die so quickly. I actually don't trust inline pumps because of how many I've had crap out. When I went to Bash for cash, I ran a low pressure inline holly pump and it died so wasn't overly happy 16 hours one way to get in the ring and the car died within 30 seconds because of the fuel pump but that car was nothing but problems since day one i should have brought something better i probably would have been doing better bringing a camry when it was 70s old school class but who knows there we go as of right now the only thing left to do to this derby tank is section out the wires so we know which one's positive and which one's negative, which with Camrys. The white is negative, the blue is positive for the fuel pump, and then remove the factory fuel line coming off of it. We're not going to do that because this right here will keep it out of the glue until it hardens. So now with this tank done like this, we're pretty much done. We're just going to put the cap on and pretty much just wait now. Um, these tanks here, they pretty, they pretty much last a pretty long time. The only thing that really goes wrong with them is sometimes these older, rustier ones, because these things are getting older, the seals go on the bottom of the tank, or you tighten it down too much and you crack all this around here. Believe it or not, the most problems I have with these are actually in the gas cap. I find that it leaks around the gas cap, and it's pretty hard to get seals for these things. I try to make them out of rubber most times, and it does help a little bit. But the other option, as you can see on this one, has actually gone for a 
welded in bung with a allen key on it so that I can remove that but I need a tool so this works it, it's pretty simple it's pretty cheap like I said for I'm gonna say 30 bucks and maybe 35 40 minutes we have built ourselves a tank that can run a lot of cars now this will work in Toyota Camrys uh, newer style Crown Vicks that don't have a return line um, Ford Escorts a lot of vehicles that mostly I don't even know how many of this will work in but Thanks for watching guys, and what do you think of this? It's pretty simple to make, pretty reliable, pretty quick, and this is how I make most of my gas tanks. So thanks for watching guys, and uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow.